My name is Ralph Gaxiola, and uh, I'm the proud owner of this. nineteen forty one Chevy which was uh, inherited but by me and my wife Linda Gaxiola her uh, grandparents bought this car brand new they ran it around the uh, the farm for at least two years and then they decided that it was not the kind of car that they needed around the, the ranch they put it in in the barn over 36 years when they passed away uh, her brother inherited the car, and he also kept it for 30-some years, um, taking it out once a year. Never washed the car. This is the original paint. 80% of it is the original paint of the car. I'm the one that actually messed it up after having it for so long. I restored the whole car. Here she is. You know, I call her my other love. This has been my passion and so I started restoring the car you know day by day you know every day two three hours a day for seven years so far took all the chromes off of it redid all the chrome all the bumpers grill installed the motor myself the rear end redid all the uh, suspension on it this car has been 90 percent restored Actually, there's nothing else that I can do to it without, I guess, messing it up. And it's a non-stop, non-stop process, actually. You never stop. It's always something. You know, being old as they are, even though they have brand new motor, uh, drivetrain and everything, you're always having to tighten up bolts. Every 100 miles, got to get under the car, tighten all the bolts down again. It's something that uh, a lot of people should get into and not let this fade away. When people look at it, you know, they see, or they say, oh, wow, that's a beautiful car. And that's, that's what makes you feel good. It's a blast. As you notice, uh, I got uh, 41 skulls on this car. And I did that just to represent the year of the car. And they noticed all my skulls and it's like, oh, wow, so many skulls on it. And what, I, what I've done is I've actually paid kids, you know, at least $5 if they can find all 41 of them. I am connected to the old days because I wish I would have been there, you know, as old as I am now and enjoy that part of it. Finding parts, that's one of the things, you know, you, you look around for months, uh, probably years, before you can find an actual part that you're missing on it. I was lucky enough that this car didn't miss any of them. During, during the years, there's been broken parts here and there, so I had to replace them. And by doing that, it, 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 just, it was like another job, trying to find something. Most people don't want to get rid of them. The fact is that they have cars, or they just want to go with the uh, highest bidder. One little part off of this car, it's worth so much money. It's actually trying to find a uh, pen, you know, in a barn, a big old barn. There's a lot of people that love this, this era, you know, the 40s, the 50s. My wife now, when she was uh, three, five years old, she used to run in the back seat of her brother's car, driving down E Street. It used to be drag racing, it was loud music, the Elvis Presley era. It used to last for hours and hours. It was all Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. They used to pay 15 cents for a combo, which was fries, a burger, and a drink. I mean, probably once a month, once every three months, they still let us cruise down East Street. 
it, it puts you back to that time again. When you see all these different cars, all these different people, they come from all over just to be cruising E Street. It's a blast. I mean, I, I wish everybody could uh, enjoy this kind of stuff. I'm actually building a, a trailer that I'm gonna be pulling with this car, painted the same, co same color in order to, to um, trailer my, my bicycle, Schwinn, a 1969 Schwinn, which is all tricked out also. I built it from scratch. The lights, a stereo system on it, and it's in the process. It should be done within, you know, three, four months. It's fun. It's so much fun. I know a lot of people don't like to get their hands greasy and stuff, but I love it. Welcome back to East Street Cruising. Well, my name is Adam Perino. Welcome to Artistic Precision. Um, my initials are AP, so my business name is also AP, as you can see. So what I do here is pretty much everything artistic that I can. Uh, my main focus is hot rods. The older, the better. You know, uh, I'm a California guy, born and raised Southern California, so I've always been around the classic car scene and the custom car scene since I don't know. The way we like to build them is as low as possible. You can see this one's body drop laying all the way on the ground. Uh, we smooth everything out, you know, shave the door handles, the rain gutters, anything that doesn't need to be there, we take out. The gas door used to be right here, so this is gonna be all smooth and you know, just put the gas in here. So we try to just make the cars real sleek, you know, uh, enhance the body lines. We don't try to overdo it you know, and make it super flashy. We just try to smooth it out and clean up what they did at the factory and make it look like it could have been from the factory if it was a more high-end custom model, something like that, so. Ever since back in the days, back when the Hot Riders were first building their stuff, low and slow, like cruising the boulevards was what they were trying to do, but this is on air suspension, so this is adjustable. We can hit switches and we can raise it up and, up and down uh, to different heights depending on what we want to do. If it's parked, obviously it's on the ground. Uh, if we're driving, it'll be up just enough to get over speed bumps or in and out of driveways, stuff like that without dragging too hard. But back in the day, they were, they were cutting the coils, you know, in the front, you know. Uh, cutting the leaf springs, riding one leaf spring in the back, just riding on bump stops. It wasn't adjustable back in the day. It was just slam, scraping every driveway and everything, so. Well, yeah, everyone, even the old timers back then, like, you wanted to build your ride to be seen. And where's the best place to be seen? The boulevard where everyone else is cruising their cars. People just line up down the street just to watch your cars go by and all that, you know. Uh, for guys like myself that are in the industry professionally, we do this for a living, that's the place where we go show off our latest work, you know? So we put hours and hours, sometimes months, sometimes years into these cars and the cruise nights and the shows is where we go to show off our work that way everyone can appreciate what we do. It's a place to, you know, just reconnect with the industry as far as the fun side of it because we're doing all the hard, dirty labor over here. We got to get the cars out there and have fun with them, you know? So. Around here, I'm pretty tied in with a lot of the local car clubs around here, and they all do monthly cruise nights and stuff like that. So a lot of the local guys, I've done a lot of work for a lot of the clubs. So when we go to the different cruise nights, I don't necessarily have to bring a vehicle out because there's three, four, or five, who knows how many vehicles that I've done work on. So I can just walk around and just show people what I've done. I was given certain talents and certain skills I can do with my hands, and I'm very artistic. so. If I'm not using those skills, I'm incredibly bored. I have to do something where I'm using these skills. I have to get my hands on something. That's why I love these cars so much because I can do anything I want with this. The sheet metal can be, can be shaped and formed into anything. You know, I can cut, weld, grind. This is basically sculpture right here, so. All right, well, this is my 1960 Ford Ranchero. Uh, it's, it's been a project for a few years. This is one of my own personal vehicles, so it's a little harder for me to work on my own stuff in between working on customer cars. 
So this thing's been sitting for a little while. I kind of tinker on it here and there. But as far as this car goes, I got this car in uh, Rialto, not too far from where my mom lives in Fontana. I got this car for 900 bucks running and driving. But there's always a catch when you get something for that cheap that's running and driving. Uh, the floors all underneath and the frame and everything was completely rotted out and rusted because this car came from South Carolina and it looks like it had some flood damage, like it was sitting in water or mud or something like that. So these cars, the, the Rancheros, Falcons, Mustangs, basically all the 60s Ford's cars were all unibody where the floor and the frame and the body is all connected one piece instead of like how a lot of trucks and Chevy cars and stuff like that where it's a body on top of a frame. And I basically copied the factory frame rail locations. So it's, it's keeping a lot of the factory structure, but super low. And then all this inch and a half tubing, I, I bent all that on a pneumatic, uh, or on a hydraulic uh, tube bender. I bent all these pipes here. So this is a, what you would call a three link with a wishbone. The airbags are here and I have a hidden airline system that comes up through the tubes here and then into here. So you don't see any air fittings, you don't see any airlines or anything like that. There used to be a chrome strip that ran around the whole length of the bed and the roof here. And then when you take that strip off, you're left with a pinch weld where these two panels are seamed together. So I had to cut off this whole pinch weld, you know, bit by bit and weld all this up all the way around to smooth it out so there's no chrome around the edge of the bed. A rain gutter here, this is kind of a traditional thing a lot of custom guys do. Get rid of the rain gutter so it's nice and smooth on top. Uh, getting ready to clean up the door handles, get rid of the door handles and the locks. An outward body line right here, basically like a rib in these fenders. And there's no other outward rib like that anywhere on this car really, so I felt the need to get rid of it. So basically the way I did that is I cut up the middle of the rib, you know, and just hammer and dollied it together, smoothed it all out and welded it all up. So that way the fenders are gonna flow smooth into the hood. There's not gonna be any extra lines or anything like that on there. I'm gonna be shaving the cowl here. I'm gonna be connecting the fenders in here and then separating it here. That way this will all be one piece and I'm gonna radius the hood so this will have a rounded corner on it like this instead of straight. It's gonna be somewhat traditional, somewhat factory looking, just super clean, super smooth and super low. And then just reconnect everything up here in the front, you know, change the fluids, you know, uh, do new spark plugs and wires and all that, you know, just the basics. But this thing was running and driving when I got it and I haven't really done too much to it. So I think it should be able to get going pretty easy. These vehicles are perfect canvas for what I do, you know, as an artist. I, I think this is one of the highest forms of art there is to me because you're taking a car that's super old, like beat up, rusted, and then you're bringing it back to life, putting your own creative touches on it, and then it's a super polished, you know, glossy jewel at the end. Fine art, everything's hung on a wall, so if you want to see it, you have to go to where that is, you know, these cars you can take anywhere. You can take these around the world and, you know, let people from everywhere see them. You know, that's the cool thing too. Uh, it's always cool riding around. On my other car, I used to have it all graphics, airbrushed and all that. Riding around, you know, just getting thumbs up from people all over the place. Everyone, you know, respecting what I do and everyone just wanting to look at my cars and ask questions, you know. It's always cool. It's always fun. But the car scene, you know, it ties in with a lot of other scenes. It ties in with the music scene, you know, the the custom car scene, the classic cars, ties in with the rockabilly, the punk rock scene, you know, the punk rock crosses in the skateboard scene, you know, you got the tattoos, you know, it all fits together. The music, the cars, the tattoos, it's a lifestyle, you know. It's not just, not just a hobby, not just a job, it's a way of life, you know, so. Well, this car is a 1939 Cadillac LaSalle. And it's a coupe. Uh, these cars are very rare, extremely rare. Uh, I found it on Craigslist along with the Ranchero. I found them both on Craigslist. Um, I was actually looking for a Lincoln Continental. I do a lot of those. Uh, I got a, a guy that wanted to partner up with me and build a Lincoln to sell, you know? So I was looking for Lincolns and I saw this car on Craigslist and I talked him into buying this one because a 39 LaSalle coupe does not come for sale very often, especially in such good conditions. So this was kind of a must buy. It's basically Cadillac's sister car. 
So back in the, the 30s and 40s, uh, Cadillac was the top of the line, you know, it's the businessman's car. It was one of the most expensive hot rods that you could buy um, for its time. And they created the LaSalle as an alternative to a Cadillac. It's a little more affordable, it was a little cheaper, you know. Uh, their main difference is the style difference as far as the grill goes in the front, the headlights, uh, the interiors are a little different. Um, little small differences to the motors and transmissions, something like that, but basically this is a Cadillac. But the main difference is this grill here. This uh, 39 Cadillac LaSalle grill. This is the grill that a lot of guys like to use on customs when they're building some other cars. There's a lot of guys with Fords, Chevys, uh, Buicks, all, all trying to put this grill in their car. Uh, this is a very sought after grill. This front end is amazingly beautiful. You can just see how it is. It's got a nice art deco feel to it. But this car was about five different colors when I got it. The whole front end from the hood, the fenders, the headlights back to here, everything here was yellow primer. The rest of the car was all flat black. Uh, the roof was all peeled off and it was all red. This fender was gray. Uh, the front wheels were green, the back ones were gray, so I basically stripped the whole car down to bare metal. Basically I wanted to show off the metal work because uh, this car for its age and for what it is is remarkably straight and doesn't have a lot of rust. This thing is going to be a totally, totally different creature once I start working on it. Uh, it's cool, fun to drive right now, a lot of people trip out on it. There's the uh, the younger crowd that doesn't know what it is has never seen one of these and I get looks from them and questions wanting to know what it is. And then there's the older crowd, the people that do know what this car is and do know the significance of these LaSalle's and they're just in shock, in shock and awe just to see one of these on the street driving around because you never really see one of these. As far as a coupe goes, I've never seen a 39 coupe in person other than this one. I've been going to a lot of car shows My name is Matt Vaughn, we're in, in Ontario, California, at uh, Artistic Precision. Um, and this is my truck, 1991 Mazda B2600i. I'm gonna change it back to a full cab. Um, I might soup the motor up a little bit, but I'm gonna make everything look real, real clean. Real, real clean. Everything altered, everything, nothing's stock. It's, a, it's all a vision. Nothing's done on paper for me. It's all a vision. Live life custom. Yeah, we're here, Ontario, California. This is my shop, Artistic Precision. I do a lot of pinstriping, airbrushing, you know, custom paint, hot rods. Motorcycles, mini trucks, anything with wheels, anything that's cool, you know, we do customizing. I work at another shop out in Riverside where they do all the air ride suspension, so they get the cars real low and then I make them look real nice, real flashy. So this is my annual September show that I've been throwing for the past three years. Uh, we got a lot of different rides coming out. It's a mix of vehicles and then we got a concert going on inside with a lot of different, uh, we got a mix of genres of music inside, art show going on inside with mixed art. So it's just a blending of all kind of different styles here is what I'm trying to do. I got a lot of artist friends that are local musicians. So just trying to showcase all the art that I'm surrounded by myself. That way everyone else can enjoy it as well. I believe we're in a best of the best show in the city of uh, Ontario. It's by Artistic Precisions, I believe it is, and he's putting it on Adam. So it's a good show and sunset and, and revolutions and everybody that's here and no regrets. There's a Forbidden Fantasy. I mean, there's a lot of people here. Regulators are here. So a lot of people, it's gonna be a good show. Interior, paint, uh, fabrications, meaning 
shaved door handles, shaved emblems, shaved tailgate, shaved gas tank, hydraulic bed, um, air suspension. They have all of that category, pinstriping. So when you have all of that category that rolls in, it makes it a lot easier for them because they got one category that you can just fall into easy. And this one has paint, interior, the chrome. So it's a lot of fun, but a lot of cleaning. Before we sign off on this week's episode, I want to share some great looking cars from the West Coast Customs Show. Here are all decades and all styles. And most of these cars are highly customized. It's a feast for the eyes of colors, shapes and designs. Some people like muted colors and understated designs and others like their cars to be loud and proud. Whatever you prefer, you will find it here at the West Coast Customs Show. There are so many cars from different decades that at first your head is spinning. Everywhere you look, there is something amazing. The amount of skill, time and dedication to make these cars look like this is truly breathtaking. Just enjoy this montage of great custom cars and we'll see you in the next episode of Calistyle TV.